Hello everyone and welcome to Life Begins at 20. My name is Mark and today we have episode 5 of MTG Cubed. In this episode we're going to be talking about the blue cards in my cube, why I've picked them, what kind of strategies I was going with, and if you have any suggestions for cards that may well improve my cube, please do let me know in the comments section below. I've really appreciated all of you commenting on my white cards video and all of my guild cards videos as well, because all those suggestions have been fantastic. I've made some adjustments already, buying in the cards. There's going to be a few cards still to come on the way. So thank you all so much for that, and I hope you all had a really good Christmas and a new year. So without further ado, let's get stuck into the video. So with the two Planeswalkers I've got in blue, we're going to start off with uh, Jace here. I got him in the dual deck, so his plus one is a nice little way of defending yourself a little bit. It's not fantastic, so whenever a creature an opponent controls attacks, it gets minus one, minus not to the end of the turn. Thankfully, that's going to be with every single one of their creatures, not just one, so there is a little bit of a control element there, needs to be. His minus two is probably where most of your work can be done with him. Uh, get to reveal the top three cards of your library. Opponent separates them to two different piles put one into your hand and then put the other two on the bottom of your library in any order. So with the cube you're always going to find yourself some really nice cards anyway. So your opponent may give you the option of two decent cards or one great card and then at least that way you get to put the two decent cards, if you don't want them that is, to the bottom of your library and you know you're going to get through your library to find the cards that you're after. So he's really strong for that. Minus two is probably where most of the work's going to be done. And to be perfectly honest, if you can get him to his minus eight, each player searching in the library for a non-land card, exiling it, and then you get to put play that card without the mana cost. May end up winning you the game. It depends on what card they've got. So if you're going to get something out like a Emrakul or the Mog or something ridiculous like that, that's going to be great for you. And then with the other Planeswalker here, Teferi, um, just wanted to try him out. I don't know whether he's going to be amazing or not in the cube, but I picked him up anyway because he wasn't too expensive and I just wanted to make sure that East, each of the uh, main colours had a couple of planeswalkers just out of a uh, bit of fairness there. So, I mean, plus one card draw, and you can put rubbish card onto the bottom of your library, which is really nice to get through your deck. Minus one, untapping four target permanents. That's going to be great. It means you can, you know, untap either lands to be able to play for more spells. You can even, with like um, Merfolk Loot or something like that, you can then tap it to draw a card, discard a card, untap it and do it again if needs be. And to be perfectly honest, here's minus 10, meaning that you can get an emblem for uh, being able to have any Planeswalker ability being at instant speed. That's that's incredible. And to be perfectly honest, you're not necessarily going to get that. But if you do, that's, that's just going to be really, really nice for you because there are a fair few Planeswalkers in my cube. So that might end up being quite a positive. Starting with a one drop for creatures, we've got Delver of Secret. A little bit of an aggressive card here for blue, but does fit quite nicely into the uh, red blue spells kind of strategy we've got going on in the cube. And to be perfectly honest, getting yourself a 3 2 flyer for one cost is pretty good, to be perfectly honest. So I'd be quite happy with that. Next up, we've got um, a card here from Eldritch Moon with Mausoleum Wanderer. Uh, so it's a 1 1 flyer for one, which is quite nice stats there. The spirits side of things really doesn't matter within this cube because I think there's only one other spirit in the blue category anyway and to be perfectly honest I don't think there are that many spirits elsewhere. The main reason I've got him in here is that you get to sacrifice him uh, to counter target into a sorcery spell unless their owner pays X where it's his power. So if there are any other spirits, great. Else you've got yourself a 1-1 one, one attacking creature that's also going to be a counter spell earlier on if your opponent hasn't got one mana up. So I quite like that for that. And lastly, we've got Phantasmal Bear. Again, it's another aggressive card for blue, which is slightly unusual, but to be perfectly honest, uh, having yourself a 2-2 two, two for 1, and if it becomes a target of a spell or ability, you get to sacrifice it. Um, so someone's going to have to waste a bit of removal here just to get rid of him, which is quite nice. So the two drops now in blue, we've got the uh, Baby Planeswalker here with Baby Jace. So for one in the blue, you've got yourself a 0-2. Uh, you can tap him to draw a card and discard a card. If there are five or more cards in your graveyard, exile him and then return him to the battlefield as Big Jace, um, which is really nice. It's a nice bit of card draw there again. Uh, plus one, up to one target creature gets minus two, minus not to the end of the turn. So there's a little bit of protection for himself earlier on. Uh, minus three, you, get to t you can cast a target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard this turn. So it's a nice way of getting something back with flashback. Um, and then once it's been cast, you get to ex you have to exile it instead, which is fine. It's giving something that doesn't necessarily have flashback. 
flashback which is really really nice and if you can get to his minus nine it could be very very nice especially in uh cube in a draft format where you're not gonna have that big a deck you get an emblem cast a spell target opponent puts top five cards of his or her library into a graveyard so you could literally um get rid of all of their cards burn them down until they have nothing left and that's quite nice to have the likelihood is you're not going to get to that minus nine um you're really wanting to, you know, to protect him on the first turn and flash back something the second turn, or even just get him turned over and flash back something for extra card draw or something along those lines, which is really nice. Next up, we've got uh, Merfolk Looter, so it's just a nice one body tap it to draw a card, discard a card, getting through your library is just a nice card to have. Next up, we've got Looter Recall, uh, so for one of the blue, we've got one one with Shadow. And whenever it deals damage to an opponent, draw a card, then discard a card. I don't think I have anything else in the cube with Shadow, so most often, more, you know, it's going to get through and deal some damage unless people want to, you know, get rid of it with removal. Next up, we've got Wolf Infiltrator. So for one in the blue, you've got yourself a 1 1 with Skulk. Uh, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you can draw a card and then discard a card. Again, quite nice to have that. Whenever you discard a creature card, you may pay two. And if you do, you get to put a 3 2 colorless Eldrazi creature token onto the battlefield. So being able to draw a card, you get something great. And you, you know, you can throw away a creature card, but you still manage to get a little body out there. He was quite good for that. Next up, we've got Frostwalker. So, again, it's one of those little aggressive cards that are in blue, which might not be expected. So, for one in the blue, you've got yourself a 4 1. When it becomes a target of a spell or ability, sacrifice it. If you can get this out, turn 2, swing in on turn 3 if they haven't got anything to be able to defend with. That could be quite nice to have. Next up, we've got uh, Stratus Dancer. So, for one in the blue, it's a 2 1 with flying. Um, but realistically, you're going to want to try and get the Mega Morphia. So when it's turned face up, you get to counter target instant sorcery spell. It's quite useful to have that um, just as another way of you know countering a spell. I like having that. Uh, Will Bender again is another one of those cards where it's not necessarily a counter to the spell, but it just means you get to redirect it, even back at them. So that could even be a little bit stronger than um, just countering the spell itself. We've got Harbinger of the Tides now for two blues, it's for a 2-2, two -two. might be quite difficult to cast early on, but to be perfectly honest, the likelihood is you're going to be wanting to cast this for four anyway to have make it have flash. So when it enters the battlefield, you get to return target tap creature to its owner's hand. This is a lot better when flashed in because it means they're attacking with a creature, you can just go, no, back to your hand, not a problem. Uh, yes, you can do it on your own turn for two. Again, just as a bounce creature, that's completely fine, and it puts them back a little bit, but it's a lot more uh, effective if it is them attacking and you can bounce it back to their hand. Uh, next up, we've got Curious Homunculus. So this is one of the cards in the two-drop section that's going to support blue-red spells for sure. Even just blue spells by itself, it might be quite entertaining. Um, so for one in the blue, you've got yourself a 1-1. One, one. You get to tap him. Uh, for colourless mana to only spend on instant and sorcery cards, fine. Beginning of the upkeep, if there are three or more instant or sorcery cards in your graveyard, you get to transform him. And to be perfectly honest, if you can manage to do that, it shouldn't be too difficult if you've got the right deck. You get a 3-4 with prowess, which is great for that kind of strategy. And instant and sorcery spells you have cost one less. I do like the card. Uh, it can prove to be quite useful. Um, not necessarily going to be the most amazing thing out there. There may well be better two drops for any of the cards that I've already said. So... You know, in the comment section, do let me know if you think there are better cards out there for any of the ones that have come up. Uh, card now for Shadows over Innistrad. I really do like this again for a spell strategy deck. So, you know, blue red spells or something along those lines. It's a not four defender. Fine. You know, it comes with four ice counters on it. If you can cast those four spells, you're gonna you know transform it over into a seven eight just from doing you know, the normal things that you're doing anyway, and you get to then, when it transforms, return all non-horror creatures to their owner's hands. So not only are you getting a 7-8 body, which is massive, you're bouncing everything back through their owner's hands. Just a really nice card, if you can get it to turn over. Uh, next up, we've got a little bit, again, of artifact support here with Chief Engineer. So it's a 1-3. The artifact spells you cast have Convoke, which is really nice to have. So you can tap your creatures to help pay for them. That could be really strong for you. And then the last one is Ethereum Sculptor. 
So it just works quite nicely as both together. So for one blue, it's a one, two. Artifact spells you have cost one less to cast as well. It just means you're going to be able to get a lot more artifacts out cheaper. And that's awesome. On to the three drops now, and we've got Aether Adept. This is just a nice body uh, coming into the battlefield and bouncing a creature back to its owner's hand. Uh, there's also Man of War in the blue cube as well, so it's just a nice little body to have there. And it just puts your opponents back a turn. Uh, next we've got Chasm Skulker. So for two and a blue, you've got a 1-1. One, one. Whenever you get to draw a card, which you're going to be able to do quite a lot in blue as well, get a plus one, plus one counter on him, so you could potentially get quite big. Yes, yeah, starting off as 1-1 one, one is you know a little weak, but... He may be able to grow quite quickly and especially if you get him later on you can just get yourself you know a lot of card draws they draw two cards or draw three cards with a spell he's gonna get big quite quickly but one of the things I quite like about him is when he dies you get to create x11 squid creature tokens with island walk onto the battlefield where x is number plus one plus one counters on him so if he gets quite big quite quickly removed with say a board wipe a wrath of god or something along those lines you're still gonna have a load of bodies out for defending so I do quite like that uh, next up we've got Deceiver Exarch, so for two and a blue it's a 1-4 with Flash, which is quite good to have, especially with blue. Enter the battlefield, you get to either untap a target permanent you control, so potentially get a blocker up, or um, you know some more mana or something along those lines to be able to cast something else, or you get to tap target permanent and uh, an opponent controls, which is really nice as well to have. So say for example you're trying to swing in for a little bit of an attack, you can tap down mana that they're keeping up just to make sure that they may not be able to cast that counter spell or burn spell or something along those lines of combat trick or even just stopping you know just tapping down a permanent that your opponent controls to get in for an attack to make sure you get a little bit of card draw with looter or core or something like that or even just making sure that you know before the combat step on their stage on their rep go you can come in flash that in it then can't attack you which is quite nice to have Again, we've got Mana War here, so another 2-2 body that bounces a creature back to the owner's hands and puts them back a go, which is quite nice. Um, a little bit of artifact support here, so we've got Master of Ethereum. So for 2 and a blue, it's power and toughness equal to the number of artifacts you control, which could be quite a lot, uh, depending on, one, how the deck works out, which cards you end up getting to draw, um, and if there's ways of getting lots of servos out or along, you know, thopters or something along those lines, it can get quite big. Um... And other artifact creatures you can try and get plus one, plus one as well. So it's a nice little anthem for them. Uh, another cube favourite here is a, two, a Pestamite. So for two and a blue, Flash, again, can be played at any point in time. Flying 2-1, enters the battlefield, tap or run tap target permanent. So the same as Deceiver X Arch there, but it's just another one for you. Uh, next we've got Seagate Oracle, so for 2 and a blue we've got a 1-3, when it enters the battlefield you get to look at the top 2 cards of your library, one into your hand and the other into the bottom of your library, so you know, you're know you going to be able to get through your deck a little bit quicker to try and find the spells you're after, may even find the spell you're wanting as well, and it's a nice bit of card draw, so he'd be quite useful to have there, and he's a nice little uh, blocker. Um, a little bit of again an aggressive card for blue so for three you've got yourself a flying three four which is really nice and at the beginning of your upkeep it deals one damage to you so there is a bit of a downside to him but depending on what style of deck you're going to have and if you can get yourself a little bit of life gain again he wouldn't necessarily be in a standard blue deck um, he may well end up doing some really good work for you and last of all, we've got Trinket Mage. So for two and a blue, you've got yourself a 2-2. Two -two. When it enters the battlefield, you can search your library for an artifact with converted mana cost one or less. Reveal it and put it into your hands, then shuffle your library. So, I mean, in a, in a powered cube, this would be fantastic because you'd be able to get your finder any of the moxes um, or anything like that. There are a lot um, of cards, in, especially in my cube, like little mana rocks, like Everflow and Chalice or things like that, which are only the one cost. So you may well be finding yourself something useful with this. Um, a flicker effect again on it would just mean you'd be able to find another artifact for you and it's a nice deck shuffle as well so if you've put things on the bottom of your library you kind of want to have back you know shuffling your library up means that you've got a better chance or potentially a better chance of getting it than it is on the bottom onto the four drops now and we've got clever impersonator for two and two blue you can have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any non-land permanent on the battlefield that could be anything you've got or anything your opponent's got and it's not limited to creatures that's what i really do like about this so for example your opponent's got a soul ring well you've got yourself a soul ring there or if your opponent's got a planeswalker you've got a copy of a planeswalker and i mean it's just a really nice versatile card to have 
it doesn't have flash, which um, this is why I took, which I kind of used stunt double beforehand from Conspiracy 2, but I think the fact that it can be more than just creatures gives it a bit of an edge over it. We'll see how it plays out anyway, but I do quite like the uh, looks of this. Next up, we've got Dungeon Geists. So you've got a flying 3-3 here. When it enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap as long as you control this. So it's just a nice little control card to have on a 3-3 flying body as well. Uh, one of the new cards from Commander 2016 here was Fairy Artisans. Uh, so it's a flying 2-2, so it potentially can be you know removed quite easily. But whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you get to create a copy of that and it's an artifact in addition to its other types. Um, then if the multiple things come out, if say for example another creature comes out, that's the token that gets copied and the other one gets uh, disappears. So in a cube there's going to be lots and lots of cards with enter the battlefield triggers. So your opponent's really going to have to think about what they're planning on doing um, when this is on the board, which I quite like the option of. I mean, yes, they could play around it by playing a you know a big creature first, then a little creature afterwards, so you only have the copy of the little creature. But the end of the battlefield trigger still happens, so you get a little, you get the uh, the benefit of that as well. So I do quite like this card. We'll see how well it does. It may or may not stay in the cube, but I just I, I quite like the way it works. Next up, we've got Forgotten Creation. There's a little bit of a zombie theme going on in my cube. Not that this you know helps a huge amount with that, but having a 3-3 body with Skulk for 4 is quite nice. But it's the fact that at the beginning of your upkeep you can discard all the cards in your hand and draw that many cards is really, really nice to have. It just means you're going to be able to get through your deck quicker to find the cards that you're after. And to be perfectly honest, if you've got a dud hand, that could be really, really useful. Uh, next up we've got Revengeful Runebinder, so for 2 and 2 blue we've got a 2-2. Two, two. Again, he's helping with the zombie theme here, so you can for 2 and a blue, tap it, exile a creature card from your graveyard, put a 2-2 two, two zombie creature token onto the battlefield, then a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each zombie you control. Black blue zombies is a little bit of a thing in my cube, it could probably be buffed up a little bit if I you know, get a couple more cards. Um, he may be a little bit slow at that cost, and could get removed before he actually gets to do anything, but if he does manage to pull, say, one or two turns off of this and you've got a fair few zombies, you know, that's going to run right for you, and he could could well be a really nice card to have. Next up, we've got Nibblus of Frost. So for 2 and 2 blue, you've got a flying 3 3 with Prowess. Again, fits into the um, blue red spells type of deck there, and Prowess is just quite handy in general. Uh, whenever you cast an instance of sorcery spell, you get to tap target creature in opponent's control, and it doesn't untap during its next untap step. I mean, it's just a really nice control card to have there. If you can get lots of cheap spells out, you can tap down their entire line and then swing in for extra damage, and not worry about being attacked on their, atta in, on their turn, so really do like that card there. A uh, new card now from Kaladesh is Padim, Console of Innovation. So, for uh, three and a blue, you've got a one four. Artifacts you control have hexproof, which is really nice to have. It just means that if you've got, you know, a soul ring or anything along those lines, which you, you, know, you just don't want to lose, having them having hexproof is really nice to have. And at the beginning of the upkeep, if you control the artifact with the highest mana cost or tied, you get to draw a card. I'm trying to make sure that artifacts are supported a lot more in my cube there will be a fair few changes to the ones i've got in there now before i end up doing the video um so this may well be quite easy to do and you know free card draw for just having a big artifact out is great and last of all we've got whirler rogue so for two and two blue you've got a two two and you get two one one thopters onto the battlefield you get to tap two artifacts that you you've got and target creature can't be blocked this turn. I mean, there are going to be plenty of artifacts out there. You can, if you can keep the two thopters alive as well, just you know, tapping them down to give some massive great thing unblockable is going to be great. Or it's even could be a great for just getting, I don't know, looter core or something along those lines in to do a little bit of damage to get a card draw. So really nice to have there. Moving on to the five drops in blue, we've got Arcane Savant. Uh, this card is really, really interesting for me. Um, it's a 3 3 for 5, but to be perfectly honest, his Enter the Battlefield ability is ridiculous. So, 
before you start the game, you get to shuffle your deck, reveal him, uh, exile an instant or sorcery card you didn't put into your deck, and when he enters the battlefield, you get to play it for free. I mean, this could be anything. It could be card draw, it could be Wrath of God, it could be a complete board wipe, anything along those lines, even a piece of removal or a counter spell for all that matter, you know, something along those lines, sending people back to tapping creatures down, sending it back to their hand. He could be used for anything, and I really do like that. In a draft scenario, he's great. I tend to not use him if we're doing a sealed pull from the cube, so just put that aside. Just for his drafting capabilities, he's a fantastic card. Next up, we've got Dose into Perfection. Uh, this is really in there for blue-red spells again. I mean, you could just have spells of any kind and he'd be pretty good. So for 3 and 2 blue, you've got a 5 4 fly, which isn't too bad a stat anyway. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery, put a 1 1 wizard creature token onto the battlefield. If you control 3 or more, you get to transform him. Um, which, to be perfectly honest, in a blue rail spells deck, it shouldn't take you that long to do, especially in cube. He turns into a 6 5 flyer, where all the rest of your wizards get plus 2 plus 1 and have flying, which means you could possibly be able to win the game with his turning over or be close to doing that. And again, whenever you cast an into the sorcery spell, you get to put another 1 1 human wizard to creature token onto the battlefield, which will still get plus 2 plus 1 and flying. So it's a really, really nice card to have there for the blue red spells deck. Next up, we've got Icefall Regent. So for three and two blue, we've got a flying four three. Enters the battlefield, you get to tap uh, creature and opponent controls, and it doesn't untap as long as you control this. That's really nice to have. And spells your opponents cast the target, it costs two more to cast. So he's got a little bit of protection for himself as well. Just a really nice control card there. Uh, next up, we've got Maloku the Clouded Mirror. So we get a flying 2-4. You can pay one mana, return a land you control to your hand and put a 1-1 one, one illusion with flying onto the battlefield. I mean, later on in the game, if you've got lots of excess mana, this could be great. I mean, you can put one mana back to your hand. If you haven't played a land that turn, you can put it straight back down again afterwards and get yourself a body for it. So this could be really, really useful to have later on in the game. Uh, a cube favourite here, we've got Mole Drifter. So for four and a blue, you've got a flying 2-2, two, two, enters the battlefield, draw two cards, or you've got the versatility there to use as a vote cost instead, pay two and a blue to get yourself two cards as well. It's just a nice versatile card that I do like to have. And Riftwing Cloudskate is our last card here. So you've got a flying 2-2, two, two, when it enters the battlefield, return target permanent to its owner's hand, but to be perfectly honest, more often than not, you just pay the suspend cost for this, one and a blue for it, with three counters on, I, it's really nice card to have. I do like that. Moving on to the uh, six plus drops, we've got Aetherling here. I just like the versatility of this card. I mean, you get to, um, you know, make it unblockable, boost it up to be able to either be an, a great attacker or a really nice blocker for you as well. And you can even then save it. You can block it, block something, and then flicker it back. I mean, just a great all round card there. Next up, we've got Frost Titan. So it's 6-6 six, six for 6, which is really nice. Uh, removal's going to have to be 2 extra just to be able to uh, get rid of him, which is, you know, pretty good. Um, whenever he enters the battlefield or attacks, you get to tap target permanent. It doesn't untap during its next controller's end step. That's just a nice bit of control you've got going on there on a 6-6 six, six body. I really do like that. Next, we've got Torrential Gear Hulk from Kaladesh. I mean, this one's doing great things in Standard. I think most people are playing it, along with Smuggler's Copter. So, for 4 and 2 blue, you've got yourself a 5-6 Flash. And when it enters the battlefield, you can cast a target instant card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. If this card put into your graveyard, exile it instead. I mean, you could do all manner of things with this. You can have a counter spell. You could get a little card draw from it. You could even, you know board wipe if needs be this is just a really nice card to have for four mana it's fantastic and then the last one we've got here it's a seven drop with inkwell leviathan i mean it's a 7 11 creature with trample shrouds so it's gonna be difficult to deal with and island walk so if your opponent's got an island it's gonna be unblockable as well i mean this thing is just a beast so moving into the instance now we're starting off with brainstorm so for one mana, instant speed, drawing three cards, put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order, which could be quite nice. You're just going to drawing a card and fixing up the next two turns for you. May well be you know really nice to have there. 
Next we've got Ceremonious Rejection from Kaladesh. May well end up being quite useful. So for one mana you get to counter target colourless spell. I mean there are some very very nice artifacts within a cube or you know colourless creatures you know such as Emrakul or something along those lines. Um, this, you know if one mana to counter that would be, be really nice so it may work, it may not, we'll have to wait and see. Next we've got four spike. So for one, counter target spell, unless it's caster, pays an additional one. But I'll quite happily have that every single day of the week. Next we've got Illusion of Choice. So for one, you get to, again, ignoring the top part, because to be perfectly honest, um, I'm not playing any cards from Conspiracy for voting mechanics, so that's fine. I've just got this in here for one mana, draw a card. That, that I'm happy to pay that every day of the week. Next up we've got Swan Song. Uh, you know, it's from Commander 2016, it may well be a reprint, I can't actually remember. Um, it's counter target enchantment, instant or sorcery spell. Its controller creates a 2-2 uh, bird creature token with flying. To be perfectly honest, if you end up countering something that's worth a hell of a lot more than a 2-2, this can be well worth your uh, well worth it to have. Um, you know, you can counter a soul ring for that. I'm quite happy for someone to have a 2-2 body and not having a soul ring, to be perfectly honest. So that's why I quite like it in there. There may well be some other things that may work out a little bit better. Next up, we've got Thought Scour. So for one, target player puts the top two cards of his or her library into a graveyard, and then you can draw a card. Um, this could be used on them um, to mill them down, or even on yourself if you want to make sure that you know you got something into your graveyard um, to be able to flash it back, or you know if you're playing anything to reanimate back. Great, may well it's really really useful and drawing a card as well as great value. Uh, next we've got Anticipate, so for one and a blue, look, look at the top three cards of your library, put one into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library, so really here you're just trying to make sure that dud cards that you've got, not that there's going to be very many dud cards in cube, but the cards that you're not really looking for are putting down towards the bottom of your library and you're drawing a card as well there. Just potentially finding, you know, getting through your deck to find yourself something really, really useful. Uh, next we've got ourselves a traditional counter spell for two blue to counter target spell. Just, you know, like having counter spells, they're great. Uh, Days is up next, so for one to blue, you may return an island uh, to its owner's hand rather than pay its mana cost. More than happy to do that. Next up we've got Impulse, so for one to blue, look at the top four cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom in any order. So it's a slightly better anticipate, but at the same time, um, you may well end up, by looking at four cards, be getting rid of something. You're more likely to get rid of something you may need later on. So that's why they're both in there. It's just depending on which one you want to use. Uh, next, we've got Into the Royal. So for one in the blue, you get to return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. If you kick it, you also get to draw a card. It's just nice and versatile, and it's up to you whether you want to pay the extra two for the card draw. It's completely down to that, and I like the versatility of it. Next we've got Memory Lapse, so for one and a blue, counter target spell. If that spell is countered this way, put it on top of its owner's library instead of putting it into the graveyard. So it's a nice way of putting your opponent back a turn, because not only are they not going to be able to um, get any new cards or see any new cards, you're not going to know what's coming as well, so it's really nice for you to know that. Next up we've got Negate, so for one and a blue, counter target non-creature spell. Again, it's pretty straightforward. Nice counter spells to have. Uh, Remand here is for one and a blue. Counter target spell. If the spell is countered this way, put it into its owner's hand instead of onto the player's graveyard and draw a card. So not only um, it's not necessarily quite as nice to have as memory lapse in terms of you know what your opponent's going to draw next turn and puts them behind a little bit. It's still going to put them behind a little bit, but the advantage here is you're going to get yourself a card draw as well. Uh, Stymed Hopes is next. Don't know if that's said correctly, but hey ho. Uh, so for one the blue counter target spell unless the controller plays one, and then you get to scry one as well. So having the scry is really useful to have for yourself, and you know it's just a nice counter spell to have with an upside. Next up we've got Chilling Grasp. So for two in a blue, uh, tap up to two target creatures. Those creatures don't untap during the controller's next untap step potentially a little bit expensive to have something along these lines the madness cost is quite handy just because you're going to be you know discarding a lot of blue cards and it means you can still potentially use it if you want to for you know a little bit of extra mana to be able to not waste the cards so 
there is a little bit of versatility there. There may well be some better cards out there. So again, please do let me know in the comment section below. Next, we've got uh, Grip of Phoresis. So I just wanted to try this out because I will be um, making the artifacts, especially the equipment section, a little bit better in the cube than I've already got. But for two in a blue, you get to gain control of target equipment and attach it to a 0 germ creature token. You know, you're going to you're going to steal a piece of equipment that your opponent's got for three mana. Could be really really useful to have. I mean, Loxton Warhammer. If you they've played that, you can steal it. You know, that's going to be a really really you know solid card for you to have. Next up, we've got Psionic Blast. So for two and blue, you've actually got an aggressive blue spell here. Deals four damage to target creature or player and two damage to you. It's quite nice to have. You know, just dealing some extra damage. I mean, the blue red spells are going to like this anyway. But they're not expecting that from blue. Uh, next we've got Thirst for Knowledge. So for two and a blue, draw three cards. Discard two cards from your hand unless you discard an artifact card from your hand. It's just another way of getting more card draw, getting through your deck, getting rid of dud cards from your hand that you don't necessarily need. Or you've got plenty of mana, right? You can get rid of some of the lands or something along those lines. Um, or even if you've got an extra artifact that you don't really think you're going to use or is going to be useful for this game... You know, you're going to get yourself three cards, and everyone everyone's happy with card draw. It's just going to help you end up winning the game. Uh, dismiss is next, so four and two blue. Counter target spell and draw a card. Potentially a little expensive, but, you know, you pay two for the card draw, which I'm happy to do, and counter spell. It's just both of them on together, which is quite nice. Maybe better cards out there. Uh, next, we've got Fact or Fiction. So for three and a blue, reveal the top five cards of your library. Opponent separates those into two piles, put one into your hand and the other into your graveyard. You know, you're going to be able to get through your library quite quickly. You're going to be able to potentially get a few good cards. I mean, your opponent could be quite cheeky, put four decent cards and one great card, and you get to choose the between them. So, you know, there are ways that your opponent can slightly make the most out of it, but needless to say, you know, you're going to be able to find yourself something quite good there. Uh, next we've got Reigns of Power. I quite like this card from uh, Commander 2016. It's probably a reprint. Um, just because it's a quite nice way for blue. You can control in the game, control in the game. You could, your opponent's got a fair few creatures and maybe you've only got one. And, you know, untap all the creatures you control and your enemies and swap them over for a turn. You know, you could potentially swing in for a game-ending amount there. If your opponent, one, doesn't have any mana up to be able to deal with it. Or if they do have mana up, they're going to be killing their own creatures to do so. Really nice to have that. Uh, next we've got Summary Dismissal. So for 2 and 2 blue, exile all other spells and counter all abilities. Which is really nice to have. Um, I know it was basically the bane of Emrakul back in Standard. It may still well be, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but just having this out available to a blue player, it's going to be beneficial because there are going to be a lot of things in cube which are going to do a lot of enter the battlefield triggers anything along those lines and just you know stopping everything from happening is just really nice to have next we've got uh jace's ingenuity so for three and two blue draw three cards it's pretty straightforward maybe slightly expensive um but you know drawing three cards if you've got the extra mana go for it and last of all, we've got Condescend here. So for X and a blue, counter target spell unless the controller pays X. So this could be good early game if they don't have any extra mana, or late game if you really don't want that opponent to, uh, you know, get that that spell off and scry two on top, which could be fairly useful. Moving on to the sorceries. First up, we've got Clutch of Currents. It's the one drop um, that means you know return target creature to his owner's hand. That could be quite handy in certain situations. Puts them back a turn for one mana, which is more than fine for me. And you can even pay the awaken cost. So for four and a blue, you can uh, get put get a land with three plus three plus one plus one counters on it. Just means you've got a little bit of an extra body. Most of the time, it would be for the one though, which is quite nice. Again, next up, we've got a similar type of spell here with Rush of Ice. Um, so you get to tap target creature, and it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step quite nice to have again another awaken cost there for another body if need be and next up we've got slip through space this i i quite like as a little one drop here so target creature can't be blocked this turn which is quite nice it means you're going to be able to get you know looter core, uh, core through uh, to do damage to draw a card 
uh, you can warp infiltrate or something even bigger potentially just for one mana which is nice plus you get to draw a card as well I think that that's really nice value and then we've got Serum Visions. This is a really nice card for a one drop here. So you get to draw a card, then scry two. So not only are you getting a card draw for one mana, which is great value by itself, you then, you know, fixing your next two turns card draw. Hopefully it'll work out um, to make life a little bit better for you. And uh, next up, we've got Press for Answers. So for one in the blue, you get to tap target creature. It doesn't untap during its next controller's end step. Plus, you get to investigate, which means you get to put a clue artifact token onto the battlefield where you can pay two to sacrifice and draw a card. There's a little bit of an upside for it. Having more artifacts can be useful as well with certain cards in here. So, you know, it'd be a really nice card there to have. There may well be better things out there. So, again, do let me know in the comment section below. Next up, we've got Compulsive Research. So for two in the blue, target player draws three cards. Then that player discards two cards unless uh, discards a land card. So, you know, you may well have extra lands later on in the game to be able to sell three cards, which is really nice. To be perfectly honest, even drawing three and discarding two rubbish cards is going to be really nice to have as well. And it gets you through your deck to find the things you're after. So, you know, I can't, I can't not like that card. Next up we've got Divination, so it's similar to the previous card, so for three you get to draw two cards, you don't have to discard anything which is the upside for this. Uh, a card that I literally pulled recently um, from a pack of Conspiracy 2 is Show and Tell. This is a really, really strong card. So for two and a blue, each player may put an artifact, creature, enchantment or land card from his or her hand onto the battlefield. And it's just amazing. You could put something absolutely massive out onto the battlefield on turn, possibly even turn two, and it'll end up winning you the game. Yes, your opponent, you know, gets to put something else out as well. But, you know, if you're going to put out, say, Ulamog, Emrakul, Crater Hood Behemoth, something along stupid along those lines, out on turn two, you pretty much won the game there. Next, we've got Deep Analysis. So for three and a blue... Target player draws two cards, and you've got a flashback for one in the blue and paying three life. You can draw another two cards again. Can be quite useful. The flashback thing is more than happy for me. I will quite happily have this discarded, for example, and then play the, uh, pay the flashback cost from my graveyard to be able to pull the spell off. So nice to have that there. Next, we've got Tezzeret's Gambit. So for three and either a blue or two life, you get to draw two cards, then proliferate. So to be honest, this card could be used uh, thankfully with a lot of other different colors and with plus one plus one counter strategy in different places i mean blue green will be able to do it white are going to be able to do it as well um, this is going to be a really nice card to have and to be perfectly honest paying three and two life to draw two cards and then proliferate is going to be fantastic Next, we've got a nice little board wipe here with Devastation Tide. So either three and two blue, you get to return all non-land permanents to their own hands, which could cause a lot of problems, especially if either they've got a lot of token creatures out or just a lot of creatures in general, because it means they're going to have to start discarding some cards. The best part about it with this card anyway is your miracle cost. If you draw it on the turn, you get it. It's only one in the blue for a nice board wipe and it can get you back into the game there. So I do quite like that. Next up, we've got Pour Over the Pages. So for three and two blue, you get to draw three cards, untap two lands, and then discard a card. So realistically, you're paying one and two blue to draw three cards and then, you know, tap and discard a card. Quite happy to do that. It's going to mean that you could potentially even play one of the cards you've managed to draw that turn anyway. So it's quite nice to have that. Uh, next up, going with a little bit of a zombie theme here. Uh, for five and a blue, you get to put a 2-2 zombie creature token onto the battlefield tapped for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. This could even be a nice thing to have for a blue-red spells deck, just to be able to get a load of bodies later on in the game, just to have a nice little bit of a defense there. Or even potentially getting a load of creatures out for the following turn to be able to swing in and do some serious damage to your opponent, potentially even getting rid of them if there are that many instant or sorceries in your graveyard. Next up, we've got Spell Twine. Um, it's quite expensive, to be perfectly honest. There may well be some better cards out there. My blue spells, I think, do need a little bit of work on them. There's certainly going to be a lot of spells which people in the comments section, I can already see it now, saying, you know, you want to get this one and this one and this one. 
fair enough please do let me know in the comment section which cards i'm missing that are going to be fantastic uh that are going to make a big improvement just you know please let me know in the comment section below you've been really really helpful especially with um previous colors so white as well and all of my multicolored ones so with spell toy in here you get to exile target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard and target instant or sorcery card from an opponent's graveyard copy those cards and cast the copies if able without paying their mana costs so you know you may well be able to get yourself something amazing from their graveyard you know some board wipes and card draws or even extra card draws as well for six you could potentially you know get something for a lot more mana for that price and i'm more than happy to see that there may well be better cards out there but you know sometimes you're not going to get as much value out for it but sometimes you are going to get a lot so maybe a bit hit or miss next up we've got upheaval so for four and two blue return all permanence to their owner's hands it's just a solid piece of solid card there it just means that you know you're going to put everything back into the hand if they're you know if they're ahead of you um and it includes lands as well so you know you may be able to play a land out on your turn to mean you're going to discard less cards potentially they may end up having loads of cards in their hand they're going to have to discard a hell of a lot which means that we'll put them behind and then last of all in the sorceries we've got treasure cruise here so for seven in the blue but to be perfectly honest you're not really going to pay that much to draw three cards um you get to delve so each card you exile from your graveyard can pay one one of this you could potentially have seven cards you get rid of from your graveyard and it means you're just paying one blue mana for three cards if you don't have that many flashback capability things this may be a really nice option for you moving on to the enchantments here uh we've got biden to thassa as my first one I've made sure that each of these enchantment artifacts are in uh, each of the main colours. I just wanted to see how they play out. I mean, some of them are grey and some of them may not stay in, but will you know remains to be seen. My player base quite like them. So we've got this one here. Whenever a creature you do uh, control deals combat damage to a player, drawing a card. There are other cards within uh, my cube in blue especially like blue or core which do exactly the same thing you're going to get extra card draw which is really, really nice and you can pay one in the blue tap it creatures your opponent control attack this turn enable so it means if they've got some things they're trying to keep on defense just to stop you attacking this might be a nice way of making sure that you can then swing in for some extra card draw the following turn i do like that next we've got uh control magic four cost enchant creature and then you get to control it that may be really nice with the amount of really, really good creatures that there are in a cube. So for four mana, being able to take control of someone else's creatures, pretty nice. Next up, we've got Narcolepsy. So for one blue, you get to enchant creature. And at the beginning of each upkeep, if it's untapped, you get to tap it. So it's quite a nice way of just putting something down, making a creature uh, not able to do actually anything. So I, I do like that. Uh, Prison in the Moon is something that I got from Eldritch Moon. I really do like this just because, you know, for two and a blue, you get to turn anything over a creature land or a planeswalker uh, into mana, essentially, which is which is really, really amusing. So you could have like Emrakul coming out or something along those lines, and you're just turning it into mana. That That's great. Absolutely love it. Mirror Mockery is something I'm trying out. So for one and a blue, you get to enchant a creature. Whenever it attacks, you can put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of it, and then exile the token at the end of combat. Just means you're gonna be able to swing in for a little bit of extra damage if needs be i mean blue isn't really that an aggressive type of um color anyway so again maybe even putting this on looter or core just to you know hit draw two cards discard two cards i mean that could be great that could be great for you or you could even swing in for the kill with this depending on how big the creature is you're going to put it on next we've got future sight something i'm trying out i don't necessarily know whether it will stay but for two and three blue you get to play with the top card of your library revealed so realistically it's the same same as having you know an extra card in your hand which is quite nice it's, but um again five mana you may be able to do better things with it but just having you know the extra card there may well be very very useful so i'll give it a try see if it stays in or not i, I don't know yet and last of all, we've got uh, Metallurgic Summerlings. So this is from Kaladesh here. So for three and two blue, you've got an enchantment. So whenever an instant or sorcery spell is cast, you get to create an XX colorless construct artifact creature token where X is its mana cost. I was trying to realistically with this card just you know help blue red spells within the cube. Again, it may stay in there, may not. I don't actually know. But if you can get this out and potentially you know get a few more spells on the go, 
you're going to build up a nice little board presence of blockers in blue or even attackers to be able to swing in for and build your little base so I quite like that and then for 3 and 2 blue you get to exile it, return all instances of sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand which is really really strong ability there as well I mean we'll just have to wait and see what uh, my players think about this but I think it could be good so there we have it, that's all the cards I have in my cube in the colour blue. Like I said in the video many times, if you have any suggestions for me of any cards that would improve my cube in terms of gameplay, please do let me know in the comment section below which ones you'd like to take out and which ones you'd put in, as it really does help me. I want to try and make the best cube that I can uh, for the budget that I've got, so again, any suggestions, truly, truly appreciated. Just to let you know, the competition for the giveaway I've got is still running. It closes on Friday, and the winner will be announced in the video on Friday as well. So if you haven't already, the link in the description below is for that giveaway. So please feel free to enter. I mean, it's going worldwide. So four packs of Eternal Masters for you there for the winner. So again, do check that out in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, do think about subscribing because there's new videos every Tuesday and Friday. The next video on MTG Cube will be going through the black cards in my cube. Um, so do watch out for that. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.